Peace and blessings, people. Welcome back to the channel once again. And today we're going to be talking about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now, when I say that, you're probably asking, what is it first? And then second of all, you're probably asking, why non-alcoholic? Well, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease used to be commonly referred to as alcoholic fatty liver disease or just fatty liver disease because the vast majority of people who got this condition, fatty liver disease, were people who excessively drink alcohol. But today what we're noticing is that the vast majority of people who are getting this condition are not, not only not alcoholics, but they, many of them don't drink at all. And so now they had to distinguish the terms, okay? So what is the condition? The condition is an excessive buildup of fat in the liver cells in the liver, of course, okay? It's not only an excessive buildup of the fat, but it's an excessive amount of inflammation in the liver as well. Now, why is that important? Well, the liver is not only the master detoxification organ, so anything you put in your body that needs to be broken down, that needs to be sort of metabolized down to a less harmful metabolite, any of that that goes into the body, the liver is responsible for that, but the liver is also responsible for making uh, cholesterol, good cholesterol, the kind of cholesterol that is on the outside layer of every cell in, virtually in your body, the kind of cholesterol that you need to make hormones, to make healthy um, you know, nerve insulation. So the liver has multiple functions just outside of what we believe the liver to function as, okay? And I can go on and on and on because there's so many other functions, but it's really important to understand that when the liver cells start to become you know, excessively built up with fat, it starts to lose its function. And that's the most important thing. The other thing that's really important is with this condition is for most people, they're asymptomatic, okay? And then if they're not asymptomatic, many of the sort of signs and symptoms that they do have, they don't sort of connect them with uh, a major issue. And we'll get into some of those in just a second, but it's really important to understand that you may have fatty liver disease and up to 90% of your liver tissue could be damaged before you actually experience any true signs and symptoms. So this is why it's so, such an important conversation because many of us, again, will not experience any symptoms. So some of those signs and symptoms could be a distended belly where you have a very plump belly all the time for no reason. Okay, now that could be attributed to other things, but definitely when you have issues with the liver, you're gonna have a distended belly in many cases. Also, uh, inflammation and uh, arthritis and joint pains all over the body. Okay, so when the liver is inflamed, you're also going to be inflamed as well too. The other thing that you, some people will experience and they'll never attribute this to the liver, but emotionally, that's where we hold a lot of our anger in the liver as well too. And so what you'll notice is that you'll be more temperamental, more angry, and it'll sort of be very outside of your um, your personality as well, too. So people will probably notice that. They'll notice that you're more angry, more moody as well, too. You'll probably also notice some pain in the upper right region of your abdomen. That is where your liver is located uh, as well, too. You could, if it's uh, severe enough, the skin could get yellow and you'll get jaundice or yellowing of the eyes as well too. You'll notice some fluid retention and again, belly distension. Uh, that fluid retention, uh, retention could be in the uh, legs as well too. Okay, so all of a sudden your lower limbs will get very uh, swollen and you'll retain fluid as well there too. And then what you'll, what'll happen is um, the liver cells or the liver, liver itself will go from this fibrosis to cirrhosis. Now, fibrosis mean, means a hardening of the tissue, okay? And again, when the tissues become hardened, they lose function, okay? And fibrosis is this sort of umbrella term of that. And then cirrhosis is the most severe form of that, okay? So once you get to liver cirrhosis, now you have tissues that are hardened like a rock, okay? And again, once those tissues become hardened like a rock, the unfortunate consequence is that now you're losing function and not just the function of the ability to, I mean, if you 
eat processed foods, you have to break that down. The liver is responsible for breaking that down and getting that toxicity out of the body to break those toxins down to a less harmful form. Okay, if you take any kind of over-the-counter or prescription drugs, the liver is responsible for that as well too. And again, uh, if you eat foods that are not organic and that have been sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides, guess what? The job of the liver is to break that down and get that out of the body too. So all of these things are gonna become compromised. Your ability to make hormones is become, gonna become compromised because again, the liver makes cholesterol at night while you're sleeping. And it's the kind of cholesterol that you make hormones with, the kind of cholesterol that you're making that lipid bilayer on the outside of virtually every cell in the human body. So as you can see, Signs and symptoms uh, associated with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease are not a small thing, okay? And so let's get into some of the causes. What are some of the causes of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? One of the primary causes is insulin resistance. And insulin resistance is when your cells get to a point where they're no longer recognizing or allowing insulin to do its job. And why is it doing that? It's because often the blood sugars have been so high for so long, okay? The, the tissues uh, at some point don't are not, no longer sensitive to insulin anymore, okay? And a large part of that could be because of that uh, issue with the fat in the cells, okay? The fat will essentially act like um, bubble gum in a lock. Okay, so imagine the insulin being the key and then the more fat you have into the cells, the insulin is supposed to go inside of this lock and key method, open up the cell to let blood uh, sugar into the cell so that that sugar can be used for energy, right? But the more fat you have in the cell, it's like putting bubble gum in that lock and it doesn't work anymore. And that's why the insulin becomes resistant to going inside of the cell. Okay, now where is all this fat coming from? Okay, most people would think, oh, we're eating too much fat. Yes, that's that's probably true, but in most cases it's not. Really, the vast majority of that fat is actually coming from sugar. It's coming from your sweet tooth, okay? Especially the type of sugar like high fructose corn syrup, okay? And that's really important because that is the type of sugar, specifically fructose, high fructose corn syrup, which is an unnatural sugar, that is pervasive in the standard American diet or processed foods that we're consuming too much of, okay? I stated this in previous videos, but on average, the average American is consuming around 150 pounds of sugar every year, okay? 150 pounds of sugar every year, and that's for like the average person. So imagine the person who has the sweet tooth that has gone wild, okay? so. That is a huge part of the problem because what happens is as this insulin begins to build up, the liver will start to, and the fat begins to build up in the liver tissues, the liver will start to block the insulin, okay? As it comes into the, ins the, the liver, that insulin goes up. You got to remember insulin is a fat storage hormone too, so it's going to make you store even more fat. Okay, but it's also going to cause the pancreas to increase the amount of uh, insulin that is producing as well, because now that this uh, the liver's tissues are blocking that insulin, the in, the pancreas is just going to think to itself, "Oh, I need to increase because it's not accepting the insulin." So it its thought is, "I'll increase the amount of insulin, and thereby increasing the amount of insulin, then I'll solve the issue." with the blood sugar, but it doesn't happen that way because it's being blocked. You know, the fat is essentially being the bubble gum in the lot, okay? So that's one of the primary issues. So you gotta address the sweet tooth. Uh, and, you know, in another video, maybe I can talk about how do you even reverse uh, this insulin resistance? Because, I mean, it's not only an issue with this, it's also an issue with women with conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome too, PCOS, okay? That's the primary cause, it's insulin resistance and so many other things, heart attacks, high blood pressure, and so many other things, uh, obesity. Uh, another issue or cause of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is also gonna be white flour and starch. And when you start to look at the American diet or countries who eat like Americans do, 
Um, there's, there's a large amount of white flour and starch on our plates on a daily basis, okay? We consume, again, around, a, around about 135 pounds of white flour every year, and that's not even including the other type of starches that we're including in our diet as well, too. And then also, the processed diet itself ruins the liver because you're eating food that has so many chemicals in it. I want you to start to look at your um, food labels. When you're going out and buying things in box, bag, cans, jars, etc., start to look at those food labels. And if you cannot pronounce the ingredients, and if there are more than five ingredients, that is overworking the liver. That's the best way to look at it, okay? And so what you'll notice is, or just go into your cupboard, Go into your cupboard, your cabinet, see where your food is, start looking at the labels. And what you'll notice when you start to put a meal together, you're putting so much chemistry in your body that is damaging your liver. And a lot of that is sugar that you don't recognize. In my book, I talk about there's over 54 to 75 different sugars that are included in the food labels that we don't even recognize and we don't even know is sugar, okay? And a lot of us don't know how to read the labels, so we don't even know how much sugar is actually in the products that we're eating. So that's a huge problem as well, the processed diet. Alcohol, of course, but again, like in this case and scenario, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, um, it may not be the direct uh, contributing factor, but you may be drinking small amounts of alcohol that is further contributing to the problem as well, even though you're drinking small amounts. Not eating enough veggies. Um, veggies are very um, healthy. For the liver, they add en the enzymes and nutrients that the liver needs to be healthy. And so if you're not consuming enough green leafy ve vegetables, enough bitters in your diet, um, a lot of the bitters that are in my 28 day and 14 day detox, that's one of the primary reasons that I put it in there. Uh, if you're not consuming enough of those veggies, enough of those herbs, then um, It'll also cause your liver to be fatty as well. And then the other thing I'll leave you with today is eating the standard American diet, which is not organic, which means that it's going to be constantly sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, fungicides, and all of these things cause so much damage to the liver, okay? So I hope this has been helpful. I hope this gives you an idea of uh, not only some of those signs and symptoms that could be causing non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, not only in yourself, but people you know, but also uh, it gives you some of the causes that could be causing this condition in the first place. And here's the thing that I'll leave you with, because I'm always trying to educate you guys on how important you understand that the body is designed to heal itself, but we have to get out of the way of it. And getting out of the way of it is all of those causes that I mentioned before, and you have to reverse engineer that. And the reason why I say that is because the liver can be damaged up to 80% and still regenerate itself. That's how, that's how strong the body is. That's how magical the body is. So the thing is, you gotta be able to do what is necessary to um, sort of get back in alignment with your own biology and nature so that you can receive that healing, okay? And uh, again, like, that's one of the primary reasons why, you know, I started doing my detox because again, uh, one of the things that I suffered from was sleep apnea. I suffered from high blood pressure. I was overweight. I had joint and arthritis pain at the age of 28. I had a slightly distended belly. So I was on the crust of developing this condition as well, too. So I hope this has been helpful. Until the next time, peace and blessings and Godspeed.